Voters in Nebraska and West Virginia headed to the polls Tuesday to cast their ballots in primary elections. In Nebraska, we're watching the race for governor. Former President Trump endorsed businessman Charles Herbster in the Republican primary. Herbster has been accused by several women of groping. And in West Virginia, we're following a key congressional race. Two GOP incumbents, David McKinley and Alex Mooney, are running against each other after the state lost a seat in the chamber following the 2020 census. CBS News political reporter Adam Brewster joins me now on set for more. Um, Adam, really great to see you. You are keeping track of a lot tonight. We should mention that Mr. Herbster has denied these allegations. Uh, so that's important because that's been part of the campaign. Mr. Trump has said this is an innocent man. Uh, but how much are these primaries in both of these states really a test of former President Trump's influence? These are two red states where the former president did very well in the 2020 election. He won Nebraska by about 20 points, one West Virginia by about 40 points. So certainly who he says he likes has some weight and has some influence. It's worth noting in Nebraska, though, that didn't necessarily clear the field. And there seemed to be three candidates, Charles Herbster being one of them, who could potentially come away with the Republican nomination tonight. Republican Governor Pete Ricketts is backing Jim Pillen. And then there's also State Senator Brett Lidstrom running as a more moderate type candidate. So you are seeing three candidates still in there, even in a state where former President Trump was very successful in 2020. That endorsement wasn't necessarily enough to keep other people from running or to keep voters from being interested in other candidates. Now, we ultimately saw J.D. Vance uh, prevail in Ohio last week after what was, a, you know, essentially a three-way race at the end. We'll see if that happens again tonight in Nebraska. Is it clear at all how these allegations against Herbster might impact how people vote at the polls? I think we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about that as the returns come in. You mentioned he has been out there fiercely denying these accusations that have been against them, you know, at every chance that he gets. One interesting, you know, wrinkle within this is there have been 6,000, roughly 6,000 more registered Republicans in April than there were at the beginning of the month. And that didn't necessarily come from some influx in people suddenly deciding to register to vote. There was, that was coupled with a decrease in Democratic and nonpartisan registration. So perhaps some people deciding, hey, we want to weigh in on this Republican primary. Now, is that necessarily because of the accusations against Charles Herbster, or perhaps for some other reason, knowing that, hey, Nebraska is a red state. If we want to have a say in who our next governor is, now is our chance. But that's a development to watch within that race tonight is the sway that those voters have. Primaries are typically lower turnout affairs, as you know. Uh, a slice of 6,000 voters could be influential if it is a close race between those three folks. Clearly, it sounds like an energized group there emerging. Well, what should people know about the race for the second congressional district in West Virginia? Right, this is an incumbent versus incumbent battle, uh, a couple of Republicans. And sort of one of the issues that's driven them apart has been the decision to vote or not vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Former President Trump backing Alex Mooney saying, hey, I like that he didn't support the infrastructure bill. I like that he didn't support the January 6th committee. And then you have David McKinley, who did support that bipartisan infrastructure bill. That got him the support of West Virginia's governor, Jim Justice, saying this is something that's important for West Virginia. It's something that our state needs. And that's why I think David McKinley should be our representative. Now, it seems as though Alex Mooney is in a strong position in public polling heading into the night. We'll see, again, how much former President Trump's endorsement matters within that congressional primary. But again, certainly a state where he has been very, very popular. It's fascinating to see that infrastructure, of all things, is among the wedge issues in right. that state, right? All right, Adam, before we let you go, Elon Musk on Tuesday said he would reverse a former President Trump's ban from Twitter if he acquires a company. We've been talking a lot about the former president and the sway that he holds over the GOP. What more can you tell us about this? Right, it would certainly give him a larger megaphone than he has today. But he has ways to get his message out to his most loyal followers, right? Whether that is through conservative media in interviews or just some of his loyal allies going on conservative media, going on conservative podcasts, or just taking his message to social media and spreading it out there. It hasn't impacted his ability to communicate which candidates he prefers in races. That doesn't necessarily mean all of those candidates would win, but certainly it's a factor within all of those races. And even still, getting his message out on other issues, you know, he has been able to do that to some extent. Certainly, if he were to decide to rejoin Twitter, that would give him a bigger platform. He told Fox News a couple of weeks ago that he wasn't necessarily interested in rejoining Twitter. He wanted to be on his own social media platform, Truth Social. As time progresses, I think we will learn whether or not that that remains to be the case. To be continued, Adam Brewster. Adam, really good to see you. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Elaine.